Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Let me see Well, since 2011, the U.S. has relied on the Russian Soyuz spaceships to bring astronauts to the International Space Station. That is, until today, NASA astronauts Kate Rubens and Jeff Williams installed the first of two new docking ports into the side of the International Space Station. Those docking stations will accommodate Boeing and SpaceX craft so they can attach to the ISS. Joining us now is former NASA astronaut and author of the new book, Ask the Astronaut, the Galaxy of Astonishing Answers to Your Questions on Space Flight. Tom Jones, good to have you. Thank you, good to be here. All right, so this is a pretty, let's call it a giant leap for the space program, the idea that we will not have to rely on the Soyuz if we want to dock with that ISS. Yes, we're ending the era of the Russian monopoly on access to the space station. It's a great thing. NASA will have two different transports that can both use these, this new docking port. And so in about two years, we'll start to see these astronauts leaving from Florida again, flying on American rockets to the space station. This is sort of a major home improvement when it comes to the space station here. <laughs> Long huh? time coming. We've huh. been dependent on the Russians for more than six years now. That's remarkable. How difficult was this for Kate Rubens and Jeff Williams to do? Well, I, I did three spacewalks, and as, as spacewalks go, this is sort of a middling kind of difficulty. Uh, they had to attach a new piece of hardware, bulky. It's floating around there. It's free, in free fall or weightlessness. And so it's delicate. You've got to handle it by your fingertips. And if it gets away from you, it's gone. Wow. So tethering it very carefully and then making sure the mechanical and electrical interconnections were made properly are the big goals today. Did you ever have any serious complications during one of your space flights? There's always a surprise. There is. Anytime in space flight. And on, a, on my first spacewalk, we had a, a coolant leak from the space station where we were venting toxic ammonia gas oh overboard. And my partner, Bob Kirby, managed to stop that leak in about five minutes and save the day. Wow. Well, I got to help wow. out a little bit at the end. That's pretty it's wild. You yeah. know, I find it so fascinating. Kate Rubens, she hasn't really been doing this long, but she got a spacewalk. New astronaut, uh, in the sense that her class was one of the most recently hired by NASA. This is her first space flight, and bam, she's up there one month and she's doing her first oh, spacewalk. I waited almost 10 years. Oh, to wow. <laughs> so I'm really happy for her, and she's getting uh, really the. the uh, the cream of the experience in space by doing a spacewalk. You're, you're in command of your own little spaceship up there. Wow. That's fascinating. Um, because you're here and we're asking the astronaut, that's the title of your book, I want to ask you a, a couple of things about the fact that we, it, it seems like when I was growing up, I had as my idols guys like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. And the way that the news media even talked about the men who were going up into space, the men who were walking on the moon, was almost in a way, godlike. You know, these guys were just not ordinary mortals. I wonder if there's still, have you come across children who are still fascinated by space, who still want to grow up to be astronauts the way well, those of us who were younger did uh, in the 60s course. and 70s? Of course. I go out to speak at schools all the time, and, you know, you get a lot of volunteers who want to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this book partially for those young explorers who wonder what the experience is like, what the risks are, what the thrills are, how exhilarating is it, how tough is it. And they all have these questions about, you know, is it going to be a tough job that I can't do? And what I try to do is introduce them to the concept that they can take some steps, and eventually, with a lot of training and education, they can be there, and they'll have broader opportunities to go to space than I did mm -hmm. uh, in the 1990s, because now we have commercial firms that can hire you and hire you as a space plane pilot or an adventure tour guide or a, an asteroid miner in the future. Do you regret the fact that there isn't more U.S. government involvement when it comes to, or do you think having a more privatized look at space is better for the industry? Well, we need both. Uh, to explore space, we need the innovation and the entrepreneurial skills that the commercial sector brings to it. That lowers the cost for taxpayers. And so NASA can contract out those uh, routine tasks, like transporting astronauts over and over to the space station. But when you uh, look at NASA, its job is to be out there on the cutting edge. And so you, you always need a, a group of people uh, of Lewis and Clarks mm. who are out there exploring the frontier and you know getting back to the moon, exploring nearby asteroids for the first time, and eventually those will be the people who go to Mars. But they won't be able to do it unless we have that commercial partnership here in the future. When you see an astronaut like Kate Rubens up there doing what she's doing, um, how important also has it been in the last you know 30 years or so in the NASA program to see women, to see others uh, out there sort of living the dream that you got a chance to live? Well, yeah, half the country's talent pool is, are young women. Right. Mm. And so you know NASA didn't have the luxury during the, the space race to to pick women right off the get-go. 
but uh, we, you know, cer certainly as soon as the space shuttle came along in 1981, uh, we recognized that we had mixed crews, and it's been that way ever since. And obviously, we have great combinations of talents and skills from the astronauts that NASA hires. And I think the private space sector will do the same thing, looking for the best qualified person. And as you know, looking at what's going on on the space station, you know, you might be driving a robot arm or launching a, a, a CubeSat. It doesn't require great strength, perhaps, every time. But there's a need for that, but there's also a need for intelligence and skill. And I don't know the answer Coolness to this. under pressure. Mm. Have there been uh, female uh, command uh, officers or astronauts going into space? In other words, in charge of the entire crew? Sure. Both, uh, it, both the station and the shuttle have been commanded by women. And in the, in the late 90s, we had Peggy Whitson and um, uh, Pam Melroy, who were commanding, respectively, a space shuttle and a space station. They met up in space together. Oh, that's cool. The first all-female command meeting up there in oh, space. That's, that's commonplace now. Excellent, excellent. Astronaut Tom Jones, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.